How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 35 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, hashtag 205 Live. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Cold Polls, hosted by our very own corporate cappy and WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done it recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment now only on YouTube, Spreaker, and now Podbean. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, we had to cut it down a little bit. But, you know, you never know. Could return to iTunes and Stitcher later on. We'll see. Um, if you'd like to join the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read on the air, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I am continuing to be joined by my co-host, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss champion, Corporate Cappy. The bitch that knows the sitch. God, and you'll be continue to be called champion until one of your girls loses the title, which I don't know when will that be. Could be raw first, though. Obviously, it could be raw first. Got fucking hot potato action happening every goddamn week. So who knows? Yeah. Undisputed champion right Let's now. Let's just hope it doesn't happen with the the Smack. Actually, you know what? I can't even hope for that because it won't. I know it won't because SmackDown's women division is 100 times better than the Raw division. Raw isn't even a division. It's a it's two people. <laughs> Plus Emelina premiering soon, which is actually next week, hopefully. Nope. Maybe, unless you're going to tease us like Kurt Hawkins. Um, uh, promote next week. Oh, yeah. Next week. Guys, since next week is Tribute to the Troops Week in WWE, and it doesn't look like there's a lot going to be going on. Next week will be our Slammies. Next week. So tune in. Our NHBWP Slammies. We've got 30 awards. 30 awards. It's going to be a jam-packed show, to say the least. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. We might split it. We might not. But we'll see. But it's going to be a great show. So get ready for that. I have some YouTube graphics uh, being made right now. So that's going to be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, tune in, guys, next week. It'll probably be posted around Friday or Saturday. It will be in place of the Lowdown Show. Yeah, there will be no Lowdown Show next week. So we're skipping next week. So week 36 will not happen. It will oh. happen week after. Week after. It'll be week 37. Woo. Big jump. Anyways. Third be this week. Yeah, I was miserable. God, after the after the high that they had of TLC had being one of the best pay reviews I've seen It in just a long time. sank. It just went right into the garbage pail. Done. From the beginning of Raw to the end of SmackDown, it was just... And, you know, uh, like we said last week, we're going to go through some heartaches the next couple of weeks. We are, yeah. like, a month and a half away from the Royal Rumble, so we're going to go through some shit where it's just going to be... Christmas time. But there things. should be no excuse to produce the product that we've seen this week. They could do better than that, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the the amount of crap, <laughs> hand-fed crap that we got this week, I'm like, come on. Seriously, who the fuck thinks? Is, oh, we all know who the fuck thinks this is perfect TV back then. Yeah, Vinny Mac, Kevin and Dunn, Kevin Dunn. Book TV. For you out there that say that Kevin Dunn has nothing to do with creative, he does. Him and Vince do talk. Yeah, and he does. If Kevin Dunn say, thinks it looks good, Vince thinks it looks good. Hey, right, Kevin, does it look good? He does have a. Poll. Oh, okay, Kevin, we'll go with that. He does have a poll when it comes yeah. to. Um, it's ridiculous. That Vince makes. It's fucking ridiculous. It's a two-headed disaster. That's what it is. God. Anyways, I want to know who runs SmackDown. I think I know Devon has something to do with it backstage. I need to find out what he, his actual role is. But SmackDown is just literally from start to finish better. I mean, this week you know there's there's some things, but um, it's literally a better product than Raw's have ever been since the draft. Raw's best show was the Raw after the draft, the first ever new Raw. It was. The best one they've ever done since since the draft. And yeah. Raw's thing is that they have to make title changes in order to make things. They have a title change happen to try and boost. Which ratings. and it sucks because no one likes the title changing hands a million times. Nope. Yeah, the crowd's going to cheer. Obviously, whatever it's because the people there are getting a treat. But the people on Twitter and the people watching at home going, "What? What the fuck is this? <laughs> Why do I see the title change hands every goddamn week? This doesn't make any sense. You're going to make like eighteen plaques now." Is there going to be a plaque for, like, each title change? No, there's not. It's ridiculous. 
I don't understand what their 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 logic is in making both these girls three time champions this quick in their career. Not even that. Just Raw is just it is not a good show. No, they they don't build storylines properly. No, two hundred five live is blowing both shows out of the water. I'm sorry. Two as, weeks as short as it is of a show, and for the little wrestling we get now, I mean it's going to get better. It's blowing both show out of the water. The pro- between the promo packages they do, and they're actually building some tension, some feuds mm-hmm. between the other cruiserweights. Like Raw and SmackDown this week tired us out so bad that we couldn't even watch NXT last night. We we're just pooped. Six like, hours of wrestling in two days is a lot, especially when it's when I'd probably say four and a half of those six hours mm-hmm. were garbage. And as we heard, there there's rumors that they might be moving two hundred five live to full sale on Wednesdays. So that so would probably sense. push NXT, or what they could do is there's going to be two hours of wrestling on Wednesdays okay. as well. So there'll be an hour of 205 Live, then an hour of NXT. Nine o'clock, whatever yeah. way you want to put them. Yeah, out. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that. And, it, and because, that's a good way to promote the network too. People to get the network, and oh, you can only watch 205 Live and the NXT back to back if you get the network for you know get it free this month, and then you pay for the rest of the month. You yeah. know, they're they're typical just, promotion. I, on a school night like a Tuesday, most kids and their parents want to get home. And half the arena leaves, or they're just tired by the end of it. Yeah. If you're going to have it live, have it the hour before SmackDown starts mm-hmm. to open the show because the crowd's hot, not afterwards. Yeah. You know, people aren't going to want to stay to see Noam Dar and uh, Davari yeah. when they've already seen Ambrose and Styles. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, they're not going to stay to see those guys. Yeah, in a way, I can't agree with that. Then and you look at it also as like the arena is still going to be half filled. When you do it, because usually when you watch superstars or main event, the arena is only half filled. Yeah, but if it's going to be as bland as the mm. crowds have been the last two weeks for it, when they're actually putting on a good product and they're just not getting behind it, that's a problem. Yeah, it's got to move. It's got to move to Wednesday. The full sale crowd would appre- I think they would appreciate it. You can see them appreciate the Cruiserweight Classic and how hyped they were for that. And it, you, you know how much they can build a superstar in NXT. They make the superstars in NXT. They have a determining factor of who gets push basically in NXT. If you can get over with the NXT crowd, you're going to make it big in the ro- main roster crowd. So, what a better way to get these cruiserweight talent uh, promoted than have the full sale crowd behind them, and for them to push the certain people that they think should get pushed, and just they appreciate the cruiserweight wrestling. As and you saw in the clock, cl- I think more people would get behind it if they actually build the storylines like they're doing on 205 Live on Raw. They're not doing fuck all. No, they're, they're not building storylines. They're not building yeah, feuds yeah. that are intriguing and, to us. And as we know, it was supposed to be shoot interviews, but even the cruiserweight matches this week, I'm like, what the fuck was that? And like, they didn't need yeah. to be there. They didn't need to be on Raw. And that's why I like these promo packages of like describing who they are because on Raw they never did that. They just said, "Oh, this new guy's coming." His name is Noam Dar. Who the fuck is that? For a random mm-hmm. casual watching Raw, they're like, "Who's that?" Give me a promo package. Give me something. Exactly. Tell me some backstory. And as good as Two Hundred Five is now, it's going to get better. We all we already know that Austin Aries is going to be in the two, in Two Hundred Five Live, which is going to be a so massive I'm, boost. He's been a great commentator so far. I wouldn't doubt if Kalisto moved over and was on Two Hundred Five Live. That adds so much to the division as well. Like. 205 Live is going to be a really good show once it gets booming finally. So we'll see what happens after that. Yep. Um, so we're going to do that part of the show already, what, eight minutes, nine minutes in? <laughs> oh, we had to get that out of the way. Uh, the Raw tweets. So we'll start with the Raw ones. I'm going to start off with Glorious Greg. He puts, all in all, Raw was okay. There wasn't <laughs> there wasn't a Braun Strowman sighting tonight. I give Raw this week 5.5 out of 10. <laughs> where, where did your 5.5 come from? Yeah, Did it come from the tussle in Texas? Stop it. <laughs> the match between Swan and Perkins was good. Also, nice nice the beatdown that Sasha took was brutal. Um, Raw was okay. The owens Zayn match was good. Also, the Jericho-Reigns match was pretty good. I feel bad for Enzo, though. <laughs> Enzo got cock-blocked. If, to say the least. <laughs> um, Might have been the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> next set of tweets comes from Sad Irrelevance. Not irrelevance at Forlorn. He's got a picture of Eeyore this week from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Raw was trash, all of it. Yes, we definitely agree with that. We definitely, that's for once irrelevance. We're agreeing with you. Charlotte, New Day interrupting, Roman kicking out of a code breaker and super kick. Fuck this. <laughs> Garbage Raw, give me SmackDown. I can't wait for Ellsworth to get destroyed tomorrow. Garbage Raw. <laughs> so he's tweeting this before SmackDown. That was me during the show when I heard Sasha and Charlotte in a 30-minute match. My first face turned to this. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, 
Only thing was good was Zane Owens. Jer- it was Zane Owens in the Jericho segment, seeing Gallagher, which is always amazing, and the show ending. The show, <laughs> the gets- show ending. <laughs> the show gets a two, not a zero, because of Zane, Jericho, and Gallagher. Plus, my pro- my profile pick today is well, you had this profile pick on Monday <laughs> of Big E <laughs> sitting down on the the beanbag chair. Uh, anyways, moving on. Casey Salvas of Salvas ninety four puts two out of ten. Why is Reigns U.S. champion? He's garbage, and nobody wants to see Charlotte and <laughs> Charlotte and Sasha again. It's boring. <laughs> okay, I, I don't disagree with him. I, I can't. I, I I can uh I can agree with him on uh you at Reigns being U.S. champion. I'll get into that on in the Raw review. Next set of tweets: Call in at Gamma you and Gamma and you won. Hey, I'll give it a six for Enzo. Okay, I think I've reread this wrong. Okay, you give it a six for Enzo. Cruiserweights, and I agree with you it, that it didn't need to be a main, didn't need to be a main event, but I didn't see that coming. So six, it gives it a six out of ten. God, that's generous. Would have been awesome if Jericho won. People remind and people reminded me of Roman kicking out of a code breaker and kick. Fuck six is too high. Okay, no matter what happens, SmackDown is long. He's picking SmackDown as long as Ellsworth loses. SmackDown wins this week. <laughs> eh, got something different this week. <laughs> uh, last set of Raw tweets. Michael Chow, 4 out of 10. I love Sasha and Charlotte, but their six-month feud has ran its course. <laughs> <laughs> making them and making them to focus on two Raw endings is too much. Uh, pros, Owens and Sammy, best of 7,000 series. I, you know, I could see those guys wrestle forever, man. It's just like the t-shirt says. These guys are incredible. Um, I just don't want them to feud forever. Cesaro's son, Jack Gallagher. <laughs> what? And Alicia Fox's crazy ex-girlfriend gimmick returns. <laughs> Cons, Rusev beats Big Cass in a cell phone match. And Reigns kicks out of the super kick slash the list breaker. <laughs> Vince it up, man. <laughs> God. <laughs> no questions for Rob, but just want... Just want to bring up for the first time ever, no Naya, no Braun, no Bo, no Jobbers. Take it all in, man. <laughs> oh, Jobber-free Mondays. Yeah, Jobber-free Mondays. Let's get into the SmackDown tweets now. SmackDown tweets. We'll start off with Glorious Greg. Belts all in all, I give SmackDown 7 out of 10. So belt, belts and all, I give it a 7 out of 10. 7? Wow. You guys are generous with your ratings this week. Just wait till you hear ours. Kalisto and Cruz as a tag team on SmackDown would be awesome. I hope the White family face American Alpha soon for the SmackDown titles. SmackDown seemed like an okay show. Honestly, hope my idea comes to fruition, though. Interesting. Casey puts five. Casey Salvas puts five out of ten. Enough with James Ellsworth, and also need more tag teams. How about the Headbangers? Laugh out loud. How about no? <laughs> How we don't have the fucking headbangers? How about they stay at their fucking job at Hot Topic? How about that? Okay. Sad relevance puts Monday and Tuesday with shit days for wrestling, and Wednesday was all right. NXT was very interesting, and Lucia Yu. Oh, he watches Lucha Underground. He's awesome. Okay. We don't watch that, so interesting. Yeah, reason, too much wrestling. Yeah, reason because I'm staying late in school studying for finals, and I leave school when it's raining and windy as fuck. Plus, my four while fake is yours. So that's probably why. <laughs> not much to say about it shows after pay-per-view can be chappy no lie but that shows but that show was meh so we're talking about smackdown hope next week they start up again so yeah i watched smackdown on wednesday after lucha underground and smackdown wasn't that great all I, all the segments felt very rushed mm-hmm. i kind of agree with him michael chow four to ten for smackdown it's a tie both shows lose they need to turn <laughs> ellsworth heel this character doesn't that doesn't know he's doing heel stuff. Yeah, basically. Pros, hashtag Corbin Revolution. Love that. Team can't beat the Undertaker wins. And Dean gets the first ever Miz participation award. Hashtag you deserve it. <laughs> Cons, Baymella runs away from her push. And Nikki wins Slammy for worst backstage segment of the year. Hashtag dumpster fire. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, we'll get into that after. Question, Cena used to badmouth The Rock about being part-time, but now Cena is doing the exact same thing. Thoughts? Hashtag sellout. Eh, yeah. I guess he'd be, he was a little hypocritical. Yep, now, now showing it now, like 100%. Um, Colin puts, I said last night, no matter what, as long as Elder doesn't win the title, it will win. 
I was wrong. Ellsworth costing Ambrose in a similar way to Owens last night to Jericho. Both shows suck this week. I'll drop both. I'll drop both to two. <laughs> oh, he's getting both to two. Yeah, now you're getting closer to our rating. Yeah. I'm tired of Roman on Raw and Ellsworth on SmackDown. I might skip WWE next week, except for Roadblock. Maybe NXT 205 Live win this week. <laughs> Interesting how two shows that are not in the Brand Wars category win. <laughs> oh, I might have to change the logo up a bit. <laughs> and just to double check that we don't have any more tweets. I was going to check at the one from yesterday. God, all I have, all I see is Paige looking at me right now on your shirt. Yeah, I'm wearing a Paige shirt, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, there's an interesting thought by Chuck Wilson. Hey, oh, Chuck Wilson. Chuck, he's alive. Yeah. He's like the big show. He came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, fuck. He put in Ambrose versus Miz feud could be great. The only person that should take the belt off Owens is Jericho. Anything else is criminal. <laughs> Yes, and uh, our 100% boy, agree. Our boy Tyler Jones at Tyleezy22 wanted to know where the hell was Braun Strowman. Uh, you know, he's taking a break. Eh? You know, he's, he's tired of squashing people. Oh, man, you know, he takes so much energy squashing oh, those fuck, people. man. Like, he just, so much competition he's had lately. He needs a break, man. <laughs> hey, maybe he... Give him maybe, a vacation. Maybe he uh, threatened Foley. I don't know. Oh, fuck it. I don't really care, because Raw was shit anyways. It just would have added to the pile of garbage. No offense. But thank you, Ty, for that response. So, we'll get into that part of the show that is hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy, and that is the Luke Gallows Polls. That's right. Welcome to the Luke Gallows Polls, hosted by our very own co-host, Corporate Cappy. Here's where we read polls off our boys at Fun WB Polls. They do some funny polls, some serious polls, all polls for your liking so go check them out on twitter follow them and interact with those polls so in saying that corporate cappy take it away which one of these superstars title reign has been better so far kevin owens or aj styles <sighs> that is a extremely tough poll you can look at it both sides kevin owens yes he got lucky to win that title belt but like look what he's done to elevate that universal championship Mm. he's had deception with his best friend he's the perfect heel champion running away from Seth Rollins I think they put him in a back seat to the women though yeah I think they're yeah you know maybe this this, this reign, time this reign I think his next one will be better I hope his next reign though is when he's a face I think he'd be a pretty good face I know how much of a good heel he is I think he could play a good face I think just the way that they made his his reign look now Mm-hmm. Like he looks like a, a weak champion. Like I would have to say uh, I would vote AJ Styles though. Yeah, AJ Tough Styles old, but, yeah. won eighty one percent. Jesus Christ! And well, I one hundred percent agree that AJ Styles has helped elevate the title. Kevin Owens, they've mm-hmm. given him a backseat to the women. Which, yeah. well, you, you put you the universal title and WWE title side by side. You're obviously, regardless of whose champion, you're going to say the WWE World Title means more. I mean, it, it Universal is still title. new, mm-hmm. and we're not really used to it yet to being a major title. So. It does need some elevation for sure, but I think Kevin Owens is doing is helping it a little bit get elevated from when we He's first. He's doing what he can. He yeah. can't help that what they're doing to him. Yeah. Uh, which one of these superstars is the MVP of Raw? Roman Reigns, Owens, Jericho, or Rollins? Jericho. Jericho's forty three percent. Please tell me, Roman Reigns has less than twenty. He had sixteen, but Owens had seventeen. Wow. Okay. Rollins twenty four. As long, okay, I can live with Roman Reigns not being over 20. <laughs> if you guys voted over 20, even the people that just voted 16%, something's wrong with you. Literally, something's wrong no, with or you. Or they're Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince they, McMahon voted. Yeah, they, they pushed the mid-card guy to the main title, you know? Uh, which one of these superstars is the most underrated on Raw? Zayn, Rusev, Neville, or Cesaro? Cesaro. 100%. Zayn, 33. I think it's only Zayn because he's being beaten the fuck up and he's being you know jewed over right now he's being he's being buried Cesaro was second at 26 percent yeah which one of these superstars has been the mvp of smackdown styles ambrose miz or ellsworth styles how can you even put a ellsworth in this con like conversation why isn't ziggler in this yeah styles though styles won 63 percent eight percent voted for fucking ellsworth <laughs> okay those are either trolls or people that actually think Ellsworth deserves to be where he is right now. Okay, he deserves to be, as I said, main contract, main roster, whatever, mid-card, yes, main title, get the fuck out. 
I think he should be feuding with Heath Slater. Whatever. I f- sure. Miz only had twelve percent. I think Miz needs a little bit more love there. He's been great. Yeah, I, I I'll agree with that. Uh, which one of these superstars has been the most underrated on SmackDown? Apollo Cruz, Luke Harper, Kurt Hawkins, or Kalisto? What was the question? Who has been the most underrated? The hell can you say, Kurt? So Hawkins you said is Cruz, Cruz Harper, Kurt Hawkins, and Kalisto. Oof. You can't even well, say. Can't even, it's Luke Harper by default because the other three yeah. are never on fucking TV. It would be Apollo Cruz if he was on TV. Guy already fucking wrestles in dark matches. Like they don't. This guy has so much talent. And they don't use him. They don't. I don't think they know what to do with him. Uh, he needs to go to Raw. Something. He just he needs something. Um, were you happy to see the return of the Big Show this week? Yes or no? I don't even want to vote for it. No. Yes. No. One with sixty six percent. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and who wants to see the Big Show open up Raw in twenty sixteen? Please tell me how you think that is a good show. God, what is wrong with you people out there? The Big Show is done with WWE. He's done. He's not going to have a title run. That was the first. We're probably not going to see him until WrestleMania now until he finally faces Shaquille O'Neal. Like that god-awful fucking matchup is going to happen at WrestleMania next year. You people who think that the Big Show was a highlight of Raw have some serious trust. I have serious trust issues because of you people. What about when he was drafted over Cesaro? I don't even want to get into that. <laughs> don't get too mad. And we're going to move on to the next next question, uh, please. Which one of these superstars does the pedigree better, Triple H or Seth Rollins? How is that even a fucking question? They both do it the same way. Triple H, 77%. Well, because he's the one that invented the move. God damn. It's just, that was a stupid... Fun to repose, man. You got you to gotta rethink your polls there. It's the same move. What do you mean who does it better? They both do it the same way. <laughs> According to the Twitter fans, what was their opinion of Raw this week? Great, above average, average, or terrible? I would say terrible. They voted above average. What? Were you watching the same Raw as us? <laughs> you clearly were watching a rerun because Raw this week was absolute cringeworthy. <laughs> Great, fifteen percent. Yeah, it was great. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, was Lana Rus- was Lana Enzo Big Cast Rusev the best thing on Raw this week? Yes or no? No. Yes, sixty five percent. How is that the best thing? <laughs> they not like Jericho. I guess not. What was their opinion of SmackDown this week? They voted for above average. SmackDown wasn't even good either. They only got five percent. Terrible. Wow. I probably well, hit that in our rating light later, and we'll end with which one of these programs are better this week according to them, Raw or SmackDown? I vote neither, but there's no neither button. SmackDown seventy two percent said SmackDown Holy was better. Shit. And that's tough because both shows were shit, and you're basically like, hmm, what do you like better, a pile of shit or a pile of shit? Hmm, I'm gonna say the pile of shit. I think people just voted SmackDown because it's usually the better show anyway. God, literally, that's probably what it was. So we'll get into our pile of shit reviews for pile of shit Monday and pile of shit Tuesday. We'll start off with pile of shit Monday. Um, opening segment, we had Rollins <laughs> coming out wanting Triple H, so he name dropped Triple H. So the obvious rumored feud that Triple H is going to face Rollins is now basically out in the open. And then we don't this took months for Rollins to finally come out and say something about Triple H. Yeah. <laughs> when was the universe? Wait, when was that Universal Title one back in like? Was it September? Something like that? And now he says, Oh, I fucking want Triple H. Oh, yeah, he pedigreed me. I forgot about that. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> How do you forget about that for months? I don't understand that. <laughs> God, this is why we're always garbage this week. Because now there's like... Uh, I, I don't even know what to say about like it. Like, randomly I'm, throwing stuff out. And then Owens interrupts. He got the gifts up from for Jericho. He got gifts for him. So Jericho's getting the one getting gifts instead of him giving out gifts. Owens blames Rollins for him losing last week and says uh, he's he is a fighting champion. Rollins challenges Owens to a title fight after that. Uh, Owens refuses and said he's already got a match against Sami Zayn. Um, says he's got a gift f- for Jericho for uh, Rollins. For Rollins. And it's fucking the big show. <laughs> 
at this point, I'm going, are you okay? I was waiting for Braun Strowman. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be Braun Strowman. It's clear, it's clear as mud. Braun Strowman, no, we get the fucking big show. Where the the where have you been? What? Award. Where has he been? <laughs> and people all over Twitter, are like, oh my god, big show's back. He looks so thin, looks so thin. He looks slimmer. Whoa. That's a good way to put Big Show back on TV. Yo, he looks thin. Give him a fucking title shot. How about that? <laughs> that really changes my opinion on it. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, I love the Big Show. <sighs> no. What the fuck was this? Big Show against Seth Rollins? Why is Big Show relevant show. almost into 2017? <laughs> Big Show is still fucking relevant on TV. <laughs> and Seth Rollins gets the gift of facing him. Wow, do I feel bad for Seth Rollins. It's more like we got a lump of coal, the people watching on TV. We got Santa Claus bending over into our stockings and taking a dump (laughs) into our fucking stocking because we got Big Show versus Sami Zayn. Or or Seth Seth Rollins. Rollins. Thank God it wasn't Sami Zayn. To open the show. That was supposed to get the crowd hyped up. Whatever. He he lost some weight. Fuck. Good for Big Show. Good for him. Whatever. But it was a boring fucking match. What else is new? (laughs) It's Big Show. What the fuck? You guys are not going to expect a five-star match from Big Show against Seth Rollins. This is in 1998, okay? Owens tries to egg Big Show on to at one point. Big Show choke slams him and then fucking walks away. He didn't even finish the match. (laughs) He's too tired. He fucking walked away. He's exhausted. That choke slam took out of him. Oh, well, Big Show is going to be gone for now, like four months after that. That choke slam was just so grueling. He walked out on Owens talking to him like that. Then right. Rollins pedigrees Kevin Owens. What, what a fucking great way to open Raw. That, was, that, that was, just got me right into it. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to watch the next two and a half hours of this bullshit. Can't wait for that. I love Raw. Yeah, wait till... Yeah, that... You people that out there, started. I love that. I read that people were loving that segment. I'm like, are you fucking people high? Who are you watching? <laughs> it's like... They're telling you. They're making you watch bullshit. They're like, here... You guys want some good product? I'm going to put a piece of shit on TV and you're going to enjoy it. And you people are like, oh, I fucking love that. I love watching the big show. Wow. Kevin, that's what Dunn and Vince like Kevin Dunn. Like, but that just got Oh, the- hey, Kevin, what, what, what should we open the show with? You know, Seth Rollins against someone. We need something good. Get the fans into it. I think the, 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 the big show's back right there. <laughs> What's up, the big show? But- well, oh, who? Braun Strowman. Fuck that guy. The big show. Fuck Anyways. This shit. Uh, it's that fucking was, stupid. That was the start of the 18 wheeler going off the cliff. Yeah. That was, to start the show. After that, I'm like, wow. Raw, the Raw can't follow up with anything good after that. But then we had some sort of little hope. Some little light at the end of the tunnel, which ended up being buried because Raw doesn't give a fuck about the cruiserweights. With Jack Gallagher versus Arai Davari. Okay. I love Gallagher. He's definitely a unique style for 205 Live. I've said it before. He's facing Davari again. Another good talent. So, do they run out of fucking cruiserweights? Because then he faced them again on 205. They faced each other three times in the last two weeks. A week. In the span of a week, they faced each other three times. I think their cruiserweight roster is a little bit bigger than that, though. I think, But I think they're trying to... Again, I didn't... The at the time, I was pissed. But then I find out after, I'm like, okay, they want to start starting feuds in 205 Live. So, this is the start of a feud. But it was a really quick match. <laughs> like, really quick. I think this was under five minutes. Wow, what a way to showcase 205 Live. Let's give them a four-minute match on a three-hour show. Fantastic. Well, great way to showcase your wow. weight division. Just I really want to watch 205 now. After the match, Gallagher tries to shake hands with Davari, and then Davari beats up Gallagher's knee and just crushes it, which set up an injury angle on 205 Live, which we get into. We move on. Uh... Kevin Owens and Jericho are backstage with each other. Kevin Owens said he's got gifts for Jericho. He, he fed Big Show to Seth Rollins. Uh, he gave... Uh, what a fucking fantastic... Thanks for that gift, Jer- Owens. That, that was st- the best gift I've ever wanted to see on Raw was Big Show face Seth Rollins. And the match didn't even end. He walked away. Great. Drink it in, man. Walk away, man. <laughs> Anyways, he tells him he got Jericho a gift and as a U.S. title shot against Roman Reigns. So I'm, at this point, I'm like, yes. Are we going to see Roman Reigns lose that U.S. title? Finally. And to Jericho, who can definitely, if he won the U.S. title, he would have held every title in the WWE if he had yeah. won it. But we'll get into that later. 
Um, so Jericho says it's not cool when he walks away anyways. So again, teasing more deception. Mm-hmm. Looks like it's uh, getting uh, worse and worse between them two. And then, what the fuck? So we get to the Enzo, Cass, Rusev, Lana. I don't even know what this was. I don't even know what to title it. It was a porno. This was Brazzers on WWE. <laughs> rated PG-13. They broke the fourth wall with this thing. Yeah, we had Rusev yelling at Lana. Enzo and Cass watching him doesn't say he's going to go do something. Enzo interrupts. And Rusev starts yelling at Lana for sticking up for sticking up for him because Lana's like, oh no, he's he's right though. And uh, Lana gets pissed off, takes her ring off, and whips it at Rusev. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, are they actually doing this? And then we come back from break. Lana is spilling all her troubles to uh, Enzo. Lana says Rusev needs to be taught a lesson and invites Enzo to her apartment. <laughs> at this point, we were like, ooh, at first, and we're like, oh, we yeah. smell a setup. But then, like, <laughs> then it gets even worse. Later on, Enzo gets a text from Lana, and it's a selfie. <laughs> and Enzo just starts running off, just runs. <laughs> God. The He's, like, singing a song, go. too. <laughs> God. Then Rusev comes in and asks Cass where Lana is. There's some pushing and shoving going on, and Rusev says that he'll he's going to find Foley and get a match with Cass tonight. Oh, great! Yeah, Cass versus Rusev. Oh, we're going to wait for that. <laughs> so Enzo, is, there's a one scene where Enzo's waiting for his Uber outside the arena. It doesn't come. <laughs> there's an Uber chant I can hear in the arena. God. And then Who Ric pulls Flair up? H pulls up in his limo limousine. Limousine. Ride. Wow. I couldn't believe it, it was Ric Flair. He's telling Enzo that he's he's waiting for his uh, Uber that's not showing up. It just gives him the limo because Enzo's like he's got a girl waiting in an apartment. Now of course, wow. Ric Flair was like, "Oh, you know, I was me back in my day." It's probably him still now. <laughs> Passing the reins over to Enzo. <laughs> <laughs> so after that happened, uh, Rusev and Cash got into a match, sort of. So Cash was in the ring waiting. Cash was waiting Rusev. in the ring. Rusev's music hits. Mm-hmm. No, Tetron. Rusev. He's like. Oh, and he smells he the setup. No. Grabs the the. <laughs> he the gets out of the ring. The timekeeper's phone. <laughs> he's in there typing. He's like, look, how long is Enzo's number? Because he's in there typing for a good two minutes. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, you have to sell it, but come on now. <laughs> uh, then it shows Enzo's phone. Like it showed the next scene of Enzo walking the like in the apartment hallway. He sees his phone. It says unknown. And he hangs up. And then knocks on Lana's door, and oh my god. This is the highlight of Raw right here. Lana in that red robe. Red lingerie. Wow. Her shirt's open. I'm just like, wow. I don't even know that's PG. I haven't seen this since the (laughs) Attitude Era. It was just ridiculous. Um... It gets she gets basically Enzo out of his pants after him like denying and denying and denying. <laughs> He's in the strawberry like real seductively yeah. and rubbing her nails on his back. Yeah, and... so he's in his like underwear. <laughs> it's the setup. Out comes Rusev. Yeah, she says something in Russian and he's like, "Oh, what does that mean again?" She's like, "It means you're a fool." fool. <laughs> Enzo comes up and wow. Literally, I'm not kidding, guys. Beats the living shit out of Enzo around the apartment. First, he throws him into the into the couch. He hits his head off the yeah. Off the wall. And I'm like, Mike, I'm like, didn't he just have like a neck injury? Like, what the hell are they doing? Throws him on top of tables, smashes a lamp, <laughs> a lamp post off him. Gets his like this vase. That we know it's a setup vase, and smashes it over his head. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And drags, drags him like, through the, the broken drags glass. Him through. Oh, yeah. Let's not look out for Enzo's well-being. Let's just dra- I know this is a segment. You just drag him through the fucking glass. That, like, that doesn't hurt. Then it just no clothes on. And it just leaves him out in the hallway. In his underwear. <laughs> and then as they're closing the door, Lana puts the do not disturb sign on the door. Yeah, so Enzo's got to listen to them get it on after. Yeah. Wow. What a segment. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it I was watched. good or it was bad. Enzo got cog blocked worse than I think I've ever seen. So they're say so is this a feud? Enzo and Cass with Rusev? Like, what the fuck is, is this? Like, make, where do you go from this? They make Enzo look like such a fool. It's terrible. He got squashed by Rusev two weeks ago, got low blowed last week, and this week he gets seduced and then beat up. God, poor Enzo. Exactly, poor Enzo. I've seen you guys tweeting about that. So I'll move on. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. 
okay, like this match was awesome. I would literally love to watch these guys fight forever, just like the t-shirt. But of course, don't feud forever. <laughs> but the match again, they these guys can pull up a really good match, and it was this was the only highlight to Raw for me right here. It was a really good match, but of course we had a commercial break. Of course, and fuck, we gotta have a commercial break in the middle of a good match. And Kevin Dunn back there, oh, you know, good match. Cut it, commercial. But it was really good though. So we come back commercial break, really good ending, a lot of back and forth stuff. Owens ends up winning with the pop up power bomb out of nowhere as Zayn comes back into the ring, and uh, yeah, I guess it makes sense for Owens to win. I, I mean, if Zayn would have won, it would have made Owens look even worse. And it would have been like, what the fuck was the point of Zayn getting crushed for like three weeks and then all of a By sudden Braun beats Roman. and then beats Owens? Okay, like what the hell is Zayn doing? If there's no Strowman, what the fuck are they doing with Zayn? Did we just was WWE just made us forget about what's happened in the last three weeks? Yeah, is this what, what this that was? That whole Foley thing. They didn't even go off that lap from last week. Like, nothing was said. There was nothing. I don't know. I that, just, then there was, was like old. there was like a backstage segment with Jericho and Reigns in the locker room uh, talking about their U.S. title match. And I love the quote Jericho said about Roman being handed everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, it's so true. Guy gets suspended for 30 days and gets instant title shots out of nowhere. And now he's the U.S. champion and is getting a universal title match. That makes sense. God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, man. Yeah. So we'll move on. You get Sasha Banks backstage segment. Oh, yeah. And uh, she's talking about her title win, and then she challenges Charlotte. I'm like, oh, my fuck. We're continuing this bullshit again. Challenges Charlotte to an Iron Man match. Why isn't it called an Iron Woman match? They call it Iron Woman in NXT. Why the fuck is this called Iron Man? Because Vince won't let it be called Iron Woman. It's too interesting. It challenges her, yada, yada, yada. Yawn. Same shit, different week. Great. The stale-ass feud that no one gives a fuck about. Everyone on Twitter, no one gave a shit about it. Anymore. It's sad, because it was such a good feud at first. You can't. And they've just... It's a good... And I loved it, but they they're, there's, there's this overkill now. I can't get behind it. After Hell in a Cell, that's when it just went down. Like, after that, it's just like, I don't care anymore. Where the hell is the rest of the Raw division? Where is Bailey? Where is Nia Jax this week? We know where the fuck Alicia Fox is. She's Googleizing over Cedric Alexander. Where is Dana Botch? Where is Dana Botch? You know, as much as I hate her, where the fuck was she this week? Raw's division. Why did it take so long to, to promote Emelina? I'm sure she's ready to come back. She wrestled a month ago at a live event. She's ready to come back. But they've waited this long. Premiering <laughs> soon. Premiering soon. About in a, Premiering in about a year. My fuck. I don't understand this division. How come they can't make it better? What is the problem here? Why why isn't Nia Jax on TV if they want her to be this dominant woman? Yeah, where the hell was she this week? Where were they? Texas? Was she out getting barbecue? Where the hell was she? Where's Bailey? Where's Bailey? Like, why wasn't there anything else but this shit? It's the same two people every week. It's garbage. That's why Raw's women's division is absolute trash. Heaven forbid there was a wrestling match this week. Heaven forbid. So we'll move on. Three hour show, no, no woman wrestling match. Crazy. No, we did get one. Oh yeah, we did. Sorry. I don't even know if you can call that a match. Yeah, Bailey versus Alicia Fox. So, why yeah. aren't they putting Bailey in a? Run this, this only story? happened because Bailey gave Cedric Alexander a little Bailey Bailey bear. This is why they had a match. <laughs> wow, the booking. Whoo, man! That, I, missed, I really want to get between this, behind this match. I oh, turned yeah. away for like one minute and I missed this match. I couldn't even get into the match. As much as I wanted more Woods matches, this was shit. It lasted like three minutes. Now is it. Bailey won, belly to belly. Done. Pack it up. See you later. Never going to see this feud again. Unbelievable. Just Ra- Raw's Women division sucks. It sucks. And it's a shame because they have such good talent and they just don't know how to use it. They don't give them enough And time. I thought Tamina was supposed to be back this week. Apparently not. Why anyway. can't they just let him wrestle? I don't understand. Does Vince only have pull behind Raw? Does he have no pull between SmackDown? Because I don't know who the hell is in charge of the, the women's divisions here because clearly SmackDown is 100 times better and it's SAG is when it's 100 times better. It's not 50-50. It is literally 100 times better than the Raw women's division. We were talking about how 
the Universal title isn't close to the world title yet. I think SmackDown wi- women's title is it's, more prestigious than the Raw women's That's sad because it's new. They just introduced it. I think it's the only new title that you could say. They've barely the referred women. the Raw women's title as the Raw women's title like it, sh- like it should be. They're just calling it the women's championship. SmackDown, they always put the word SmackDown in front of it. And it's sad because that's more prestigious than their so-called women's title. I don't understand. We'll move on. Fuck it. We're moving on. <laughs> Rich Swan versus TJ Perkins. So I got another small light down on the title. Uh, TJ is awesome too. Love his entrance. We love it. We love his technique in the ring. It was actually a really good, decent promo match for 205 Live. I missed this match. And Swan picked up the win. It was a good 10-minute match. It was a, uh, something I would never have thought to see on Raw was a 10-minute Cruiserweight match. But I think that's because... They just ran out of what to do with the rest of the roster somehow because we're missing so many people this week. I, I don't know. Whatever. I loved it. Um, Rich Swan, TJ Perkins, definitely the two main guys of the 205 division right now. And you know what? Good. Girl Pro match. I Whatever. Hope, hoping they get over, especially with Rich Swan's entrance music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you handle this? Can you handle this? <laughs> oh, and we'll, we'll move into something you probably want to talk about. The Tussle... Oh, in yeah. Texas match. This was the best match of the Who week. the fuck thought of Tussle in, Tussle in Texas? And Titus O'Neil isn't even from Texas. Unbelievable. This was phenomenal. You know why it's still? This was shit. This was great. We had the shortest squash match in WWE history. <laughs> Mark Henry comes out to all the Longhorns chants. The hook'em hordes. God. I'm falling asleep talking about it. Um... And gets in the ring, World Strongest Slam, that's it. Titus goes for a clothesline, misses in a World Strongest Slam in 10 seconds. Wow. <laughs> what a tussle. What a tussle. <laughs> you had Titus O'Neil backstage handing out flyers for this fucking match. He's, he's like a promoting his own garbage now. Oh my god. What is happening? No, this, we, we did have, we did, it was not jobber free Monday. We had a, this is, is considered a, a jobbing match. <sighs> I can't even... I don't even know what to say about this match. Is this a feud now? I don't know. If this is a feud, I swear... Watch, we're going to get fucking Tyus O'Neal and Mark Henry dressed as fucking Santa Claus the next couple of weeks. And we're going to have a, a, a tussle in the North Pole match. And then fucking Santa versus Santa. A tussle in Tinseltown. God. Oh, my God. I hope not. <laughs> I I love just seeing Mark Henry on TV as my boy, so I don't I don't really no, care. Sure. Um, Mark Henry wins in 10 seconds. Good. Move what on. a tussle. Moving on. Mo- tussle out of here. Um, Jericho versus Reigns for the U.S. title. Uh, I this really could wish... have been so much better. If they had made Jericho win the U.S. title. <laughs> God, happen- why didn't they have that happen? Because if you had Owen screw over Reigns, it would make more sense for their universal title feud. Yeah. And then you can have Jericho versus Rollins for the U.S. title at Roadblock. Heaven forbid that fucking happened. But no, they chose to keep it under. Why does Roman Reigns need to be U.S. champion here? Especially when he's going for the the Universal title. I don't understand. He's not defending the U.S. title at all. God, they're just shoving him down our throats, and it's bad. Like, he kicked out of a fucking super kick by Owens into a code breaker. Do they not realize what the hell they're doing right now with Roman Reigns? Do they not realize that they're they're feeding him so far down our throats, and that's why he's getting booed? They're probably bashing, oh, oh, oh done. Well, why are they booing Roman Reigns? What's going on here? Can you, can you mute the volume? Oh, no, this everyone's booing. Yeah, because you guys shoved them far down our throats that no one gives a shit about Roman Reigns anymore. No one cares. Jericho. The only people that like Roman Reigns are the kids and the moms are like, oh my god, Roman Reigns is so hot. <laughs> the only people that cheer Roman Reigns. That's it. You can hear when he comes out that the cheers are like, yeah! They're so high pitched. Yeah, and the, the guys and the people that actually know that Roman Reigns sucks, boo! <laughs> They're so much louder, and I I know it's music to my ears, but it's seriously, like, it's like Cena all over again. It makes me sick, and it's Roman Reigns getting to that cringeworthy spot of seeing him on TV. It's like, bad. Having Jericho win the title here would have made so much sense. And you know what? I feel bad for Reigns because I want to get behind him, but when they, he gets shoved down our throats the way that Darby pushes him, it doesn't make me want to like him. It's sad. Why can't he lose once in a while? Yeah. Why does he have to be winning everything like this bullshit? This match, he didn't need to win. It was a half-decent match. 
Like it had a slow start, but it ended up being pretty good. Like we had a near fall when Jericho or uh, Owen super kicked Reigns into the cold breaker. How do you kick out of that? How? Two don't... finishers. And he kicks out. Yep. It would have, like I said, it would have made so much sense for their feud to have yeah. Jericho beat Reigns because Owen screwed Reigns out of the U.S. title, and then God. that would have been a better build for their Universal Title feud and match than this crap. Yeah, and, and I would have loved Jericho versus Jericho, Rollins for the U.S. title. That would have sold more on and, this pay per view. Jericho has been so hot the last like half half a year. He deserves a mid card title at least. I agree. It, it, heaven forbid that. They give Chris Jericho something. The U.S. title, and he's owned every title in the WWE. Why not? It's like it's not like the guy doesn't deserve it. He's put on some of the best work he's put in his career this year. This year alone, he's gotten the most over of his entire career. I think he was well deserving of that title. Yeah, I, I don't understand what the decision was behind that. And then it could have led to an uh, Owens Jericho thing down the line for yeah. double title. Yeah. So move on, and we had uh, Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Club. Like and determine who the winner will go on to roadblock week. to face New Day for the titles. Every week, Raw's tag team division is just getting rinsed yep. and repeated. And it's the every same goddamn week. fucking circle over and it's over New again. New Day versus Club. New Day versus Cesaro and Sheamus. The Club versus Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah. Enzo and Cass are feuding with Rusev for, for some, some reason. reason. Now, why, heaven forbid they're in a tag team. Golden Truth and Shining Stars are, are nowhere are to be absent. Found. They weren't even promoting their fucking timeshare this week. What the hell is Neville? I guess someone on Twitter posted a picture of a milk carton and said missing. Neville, please call if you find him. Where the fuck was he? They just came back from injury and they're like, oh no, Neville, you're going to sit down now. Oh, yeah. If they're Makes not going to do anything perfect with him, sense. put him in the cruiserweight division. He could be the leader of that cruiserweight division. He should. I really hope he goes there. But this tag team match is actually really good. Uh, Cesaro, unreal as always. The club do deserve better, though. They got jobbed here, basically. Did um, Carl Anderson take the pin again? There wasn't even a oh, yeah, pin. There was like pin, this yeah. like shit show of a brawl. Like, yeah, just, two days at, at ringside eating stuff. Yeah, and, and on beanbag bean chairs. chairs. Wow. Fuck, way, a way to promote the almost longest reigning tag team champion. And they had this terrible like off the top rope splash onto everybody. And they all just like fell back. And, and then, like brawled with each other. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit show? What is going on? This is a number one contender match. Oh, and then now next week it's booked. Triple threat match for the tag team titles. Not a roadblock. Next week on Raw. So tribute to the troop show. Heaven forbid that it's at a roadblock. <laughs> Unfucking believable. So what the hell is going to happen at a roadblock? So the New Day wins. Whoever they pinned, the other people that didn't get pinned face them for the titles. I don't... What the fuck is this? Maybe this week it ends in like a DQ or something and they, and again? they do the match again. How do you even DQ? It's triple threat. True. I don't understand this. This was terrible garbage booking why we said Raw was shit this week. Every week. Every they have week. no idea what to do with their tag teams either. Between their women and their tag teams, they're just yeah. like... There's got to be a difference between the, the creative people on Raw and SmackDown. Because create people on Raw are smoking some shit that I don't know what the f- I don't know what the hell their their thought process is. People on SmackDown actually know what the hell's going on. I never thought I'd say this, but I am so sick of the New Day now. Wow, wow, they are pissing me off. They are blissing me off. Ooh. They are my blissed off moment of the week. Oh, there we got it, ladies and gentlemen. The blissed off moment of the week happens on Raw, and, and it's, it's the New, New Day. Day. They they're obviously gonna break Demolition's record, right? Yeah. Yeah. They pass him in, what, next week? I think next week. It's, yeah. What are they going to do? At Tribute to the Troops, are they really going to do a title change at Tribute to the Troops? <laughs> I get the, the Troops home happy, but I don't know. That's, uh, that should be saved for, heaven forbid, that Jericho gets another rematch to U.S. title and actually wins it next week, which I think should happen, but I hope probably won't. He'll probably have, like, two backstage segments and then nothing. Um, uh, we'll just move on yep, that was it. to a shit show of an Sorry, ending of Raw. Yeah. Charlotte has to apologize to her dad. Why? And Why this does this the need main to happen? Event. This, how is this the main event? This segment was the main event. Everyone says, even JR says that Raw shouldn't be ending with segments because it's terrible booking and terrible for TV. And look what they do. 
They yeah, did I'm, it, and guess what? It was shit. Everyone on on Twitter and social media was like, what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, I mean, like, I know they end with a match for the people that are there, a dark match after, but the people I'm watching on TV at home, like, yeah. they don't want to see yeah. that so, end the show. She calls out Ric Flair. Ric Flair comes out. We all know he's there. And uh, she's all sympathetic to him, uh, gives him a hug, and then gives Ric Flair... The bi- I, I knew this was fucking coming. I'm like, this is not real. Something's going to happen here. Slaps the shit out of Ric Flair. Like, that was a fucking open palm smack. And then Sasha comes out for the save. You know, M- Sasha saving Ric Flair makes so much sense. Well, because last week Flair came out and held her hand. Oh, yeah, she that, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, she dedicated her match to him. Then Charlotte whoops Sasha's ass, and then that's how we end Raw. Wow! And Flair's crying. That is so awesome. I was I loved Raw this week. Such a great ending. Oh my god, no. Like we we are That all, was fucking atrocious. We're all in for the women's revolution, but right now like, That was just, cringe. Now now they're shoving it down our throats too much now. That was a tr- the most atrocious ending of Raw I've ever seen. Why like, would you end? why was this not in the middle of the fucking show? Cuz Ric Flair was on it. He didn't add anything to the segment. I wouldn't have cared if they made Jericho and Reigns because that should have probably been the main event for the U.S. title. But no. How the hell was this the main event? I know you're trying to build this, again, like you said, the women's revolution and them getting main event It doesn't deserve to be in the main event, this thing. This did not segment does not deserve to be in the main event. This was garbage. This deserved to be in the middle or somewhere in the card that it... Why did they bring back recycled shit that they didn't... They stopped doing and, and expect people to get behind it? We already seen this happen before, Charlotte, in this whole Ric Flair thing. Now they're bringing it back again. This is, I, I don't understand. I assume the only way it's going to happen is that Flair is going to turn on Sasha, and he's going to end up with Charlotte at Roadblock, and he's going to become her manager again. I guess something like that. But unbelievable. Let's get to our rating for Raw. It's interesting. I'm giving Raw this week. <sighs> I think I have a rating in my head. 1.5 out of 10. The 1 going to the cruiserweights and the 0.5 because I thought the Lana segment was funny a little bit and I just loved seeing her in a red robe. That was it. It. That was it. Yep. I'm giving Ra a 2 this week. Wow. 2. Or Lana gets the whole 2. I mean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, other than that. Yeah. Raw with shit, plain and simple. As it is every week. Yep. So we'll move on to I, I expected SmackDown to at least blow it out of the water, or at least be a little bit good, and nope. Nope. SmackDown was just as bad this week. Oh my god, what the fuck did we just see on SmackDown this week? What the fuck was that? That was literally like a, a freaking two hour episode of main event. That was just pure garbage. We start out with Styles. In the ring, and he's got his walking boot. He invites Ellsworth out to the ring. Ellsworth cuts this like heelish promo on Styles. I'm like, what the fuck? So is he a heel now? But then they still act like he's a face. Then he, he, he talks about Styles talks about what Ellsworth did to Ambrose and how mad he's gonna be. And he, Ambrose better, or Ellsworth better watch out for Ambrose. And Dean Ambrose comes out and dirty deeds Ellsworth and just walks away. In a way. Yeah, I liked it, but it looks like they're they're really pushing Dean Ambrose to be like the next Stone Cold. Just comes out, dirty deeds dirty and leaves. Deeds leave. And I guess we find out also during a segment that there's not going to be a main title match like we thought there was going to be. Uh, the world title versus world title and Styles versus Ellsworth. I guess Styles is not medically cleared, and it's a real injury. He injured his ankle at TLC, so um, he was. In, that's why he was in a walking boot. That walking boot was real. So. You know, that sucks, but hopefully Styles, uh, he does have seven weeks to heal up for <laughs> Royal Rumble, so uh, it'll be interesting. And I think this screwed up. I think they had plans for Undertaker to come out here because he was backstage as well, so who knows. Um, we'll move on. Orton and Wyatt versus Slater and Rhino, a rematch for the Tag Team Championships. This is what you expected from Yeah, it, it was the official rematch. Um, I, the only thing I could point out that I liked about this was uh, the Wyatt's due entrance, as you uh, you told me about. And, and I finally seen this week. Uh, it, start out, it starts out with Rainy Orton's old theme into his new theme, and then 
clashes with the wise team. I like that. I actually came behind. It looks like they're they're, they're going through with this, and it doesn't look like Rainy Orton's going to turn on Wyatt anytime soon. It looks like they're actually making Rainy Orton a part of the Wyatt family. And we'll jump ahead to Talking Smack at the beginning of it. They yeah, had them. They took over yeah. Talking Smack. And Orton said, I used to be a Viper and, and, now and a Legend Killer. Just get a different shirt. I can't take him seriously as a Wyatt when he has that sweater. He's got he's to have a different one. Um, so, yeah, again, as we expected, uh, Wise retain. Uh, the, the finisher, I'm calling I'm I'm labeling it as a sister KO. Um, it's uh, Bray has him in the sister Abigail and then whips him back into the RKO out of nowhere, which is pretty look cool looking finisher. I, I like this. You know what? If there's one thing I can point out that's good about SmackDown, I can get behind Orton and Wyatt as a tag team and them being the tag team champions. Um, I guess it's going to be the Freebird rule with them too with Luke Harper. So yeah, Luke Harper's carrying both titles around. Yeah, so maybe it'll be the Freebird rule. If not, we'll, we'll see. Um, maybe it's just the title holder. Who knows? But they have it like attached together and draped over his neck. <laughs> sure. Why not? It's like the John Cena with the yeah. two belts. So I guess we'll have to talk I, about it regardless. I really like the Orton yeah. Wyatt thing. I yeah. think it's going to go a long way with the new t- with the titles. And that was literally one of the only pluses of SmackDown this week. <laughs> literally, <laughs> that's sad to say. Um, and uh, more deception after talking Smack Slater and yeah, Rhino. Yeah, Slater and Rhino. Like, uh, Rhino just walked up. away and they're trying to blame each other of whose fault it was. I knew they just come. We called this. So uh, yeah, we'll move on. I guess we're going to start talking about the pile of shit that was on SmackDown. Kalisto and Corbin, are, their feud is continuing for some just end, like for some god awful reason. The match was good, better than we expected. At TLC, end it there. No, they decided to continue it this week with a rematch. But Kalisto backstage promo saying, "Oh, I can beat him because I'm faster." No, you can't. You've had many times to beat Corbin Kalisto, and you haven't. Clearly, you can't even beat him in a chairs match. Your shit kicked out of you, and end of days on a pile of chairs. <laughs> what makes you think you were going to beat him this time? No. no, he got killed. And Corbin said before the match, "I'm going to squash him like the mosquito that he is." And he did. He did. Like Corbin, the guy. You know, I had one thing that they got rid of his red in his entrance, and that kind of pissed me off. I did like the background they used for his entrance, but you know what? Whatever. Corbin is still my fave, man. Unreal. He should be in the main title picture soon. The guy deserves it. They just keep feeding him Kalisto for some fucking reason. I, I actually looked up his record since, like, his, uh, what is it? Uh, his his record since he's been on the main roster, yeah. like, his, who he's faced. He's faced Jack Swagger, Kalisto, and Kane. Wow. How can you take this guy seriously? And Dolph Ziggler. He <sighs> faced Kane once. Dolph Ziggler, Okay. But you need to. This guy needs a better feud and to be pushed. And we 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 think it's Ambrose. Ambrose would be perfect for facing Baron Corbin. That'd be honestly a good feud. But again, he faces Kalisto again this week, and he kills Kalisto again. Fucking big shocker! Of course, it's gonna be Kalisto again. If Kalisto cool. had a one year, I would have been so mad. I would have had a lot it was more. It's kind of cool how he caught him for the end of days, though. Yeah. He, like caught him off the top. Baron rope. Corbin's finisher is so underrated. People don't know. That's like the best finisher I've ever seen. Our friend that never watches wrestling came over and watched it with us this week, and he said that that finisher was awesome. Yeah, he doesn't watch wrestling at all, guy. He's less than a casual. He he used to watch wrestling here and there back in the Attitude Era. That's how much of a wrestling fan he is. And he said that he loved Corbin's finisher. So, you know Corbin's finisher is good when he can get over with people that don't watch wrestling anymore. So, we'll move on. Oh my god, I don't know what the fuck this was. Again, some more cringeworthy bullshit. Carmella's in the ring. Her shiner's looking still bad, too, from that I'll knee. give her a shiner. <laughs> and she starts making fun of Natty, saying that she's the one that attacked Nikki and just, like, rips Natty apart. Natty runs out, starts attacking Carmella before their match, and Carmella runs away, and Natty chases her. That's it. No match ever fucking... No match happens here. Heaven forbid a fucking match actually took place here. Oh, and then and it was it. backstage to Natty walking and then see, first of all they fucked up huge yeah, the camera shows where it's supposed to be natty walking fast or almost at a running pace but when they when they cut to the camera she's waiting for like the okay a to signal. start walking and then she starts walking i'm like what the fuck this was just terrible presentation yeah and then she meets up with nikki bella who just stares at her and then walks away yeah oh that's what the fuck was that what the hell was that Heaven forbid again that we didn't have we have a wrestling match. No, we get cringeworthy chasing around like we're five years old in the playground. 
great. We did not even have a women's match this week on SmackDown. And we even get the... Uh, speaking of Nikki Bella, what the fuck was that random point? Who the hell is Steph... Was it Stephanie? Sophie? What the fuck her name was? What the hell was that? What did that do for any feud on SmackDown? That might have been the most pointless promo of all time. It, th- there, No one interfered. There was no conflict. It led to nothing. It didn't... There was no one else backstage. It, it literally so- should have been a network commercial. What the fuck was that? Who is Sophie? Who? Who is that? And why should we care? She had a British accent. Okay. That's nice. But they didn't tell us where and when she came. Where did she come from? Apparently she's a, s- a singer or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. Oh, but, man. Smackdown. Land Bella, of opportunity. Yeah. Was, she was talking. She was just so fake. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right here at this segment, I'm listening to Nicky and like, my God. Oh, are we going to have a thing after the show? Oh, yeah. Thank you. I can just you. tell how fake Nikki Bella is. You stupid little fake princess. <laughs> Get handed freaking everything because you're dating John Cena. And Daniel Bryan's your brother-in-law now. Yeah. F- yeah. I, yeah, I'm well, done. Yeah. I'm going to get carried you, away here. Before you say here. anything worse, let's move on from the yeah. cringe segment. Uh, we get Ascension versus the Hype Bros. Ascension is on TV in a match. Okay, so something I'm okay with to watch on SmackDown Daily Basis. You, this tag, you're going to have a tag team match that is going to – there's going to be one part of it that's going to slowly lead to something in the coming weeks, and this is it. So it was a decent match. Hype Bros and Ascension had a promo – before the match, like a uh, on-screen Vignette. promo, and the hype bros basically saying that they're coming after the white. So we know why they're having this match, and we know why the hype bros get buried or the ascension gets buried once again because the hype bros said they're coming after the white. So in my head, I'm like, okay, so the ascension's gonna lose because they want to make the hype bros look strong if they said they're gonna go after the whites. But again, they bury the ascension again. Why, heaven forbid, you make these guys look dominant like they were at NXT? They have new face paint. <laughs> Whoa, wow. I love the Ascension. They have new face paint. God, they're so good. No, they get fucking buried once again. The tag team, I'm, I'm going to stop liking them, man. I can't, I can't get behind Nothing them anymore because like. they lose all the time. They have probably the biggest losing record in WWE history. I don't remember the last time they won a match. When's the last time the Ascension won a match on WWE main roster TV? Not NXT. And not main event or superstars. No. I'm not counting that either. SmackDown or Raw. I want to know. So we're moving on from that. We'll go to Miz TV with Dean Ambrose. They talk about Ambrose's TLC match. Miz basically antagonizing Ambrose the entire time. And then presents him with the first ever Miz <laughs> Participation Award. Wow. <laughs> And it had Miz's face on it. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, Miz Maurice on it. <laughs> Which is uh, the inspiration for one of our awards for the Slammies next week, our Twitter Fan Participation Award. Um, so look out for that next week. Anyways, Dan Bryan ends up coming out after the guys started uh, bickering and uh, basically brawling with each other. And he's uh, basically, Dan Bryan's like, I'm going to give the fans what they want. And that is the IC title match. And so they books it, Dean Ambrose versus Miz in the main event for the Intercontinental Championship. And that makes sense because we weren't going to get the uh, world title match because AJ Styles was hurt. So into that match, it was actually a really good match. I enjoyed yeah, it. It was nice to see um, these two guys actually, I don't think they faced each other yet. No, so it was, nice it was really close. Good. This was really, really close. Uh, but we all know what the hell was going to happen. He was going to come out. James fucking Ellsworth can't stay out of the, the guy that gets picture. more TV time than Apollo Crews and Baron Corbin combined comes out and screws over Dean Ambrose by not he didn't mean to do it apparently yeah I didn't mean to he's trying he to tell him that he's trying to get he's trying to save you from Maurice that distracted Ambrose yeah Ambrose had the pin and then wow 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 Gets distracted into the skull crushing finale for the win. And a met, I say met to that ending. Sure. It was a good match up until the ending. The ending sucked. Yeah. So we're going to move on from that. Chad Gable faced Tyler Breeze. Um, a really, really quick match. God. These two guys could have had a, like a good 10 minute match. Both these guys are They're awesome. You look at the talent level between both of these guys and both they these both, teams. They could both be singles wrestlers. But they get less. They, Ellsworth gets more TV time than these guys. That makes sense. Uh, land of opportunity, my fucking ass. Gable won with his uh, suplex pin. Yeah, I, I love that. Gable wins AA. But nothing else to say. 
I just wish both these teams would get more TV time. Yeah, Why, I, hope I this, agree. I hope this leads to a feud. That would actually be a pretty good feud. A versus uh, the Fashion Police. Or Brazago. They had backstage, they had uh, him, them handing out yeah. their, their, f- their tickets. tickets to <laughs> AA. So I'm, I'm hoping they elevate that feud. That, that has potential yeah. as a secondary. And I can get behind that. I, I hope that happens. So we'll talk about the last part of SmackDown. Oh, yeah. It was terrible. I don't know why you only like. I only liked it. The best part was the pyro, Alexa's championship celebration. That's the only good part of this was the pyro, because it was Alexa Bliss colors. That was it. <laughs> Becky came out and challenges Alexa. Alexa says no and walks away. The end. End of segment. What a celebration! Wow, heaven forbid there's some brawling going on here, some punches back and forth, you know, a table breaks. Yeah, they, These guys they, just had a fucking table match. Could they had confetti or, you know, something in the ring? No, no, they're too cheap. We had just pyro in different colors. Woo That is not the way to treat a champion like her. That is the most, that was the worst championship celebration I've ever seen. And there's been some bad ones. It was so generic and bland and stale as fuck. Especially going off how good the feud has been leading up to And that's it. The and that was it. We didn't get anything after that. Done. Uh, wow. Was, don't you like the way Alexa holds the title, though? Like, on her shoulder? Sure. And then she turned around and tried to kiss it. I was like, what I would do other than to that, be that title. Other right? than that, the segment sucked. It was garbage. 10 out of 10. Cringeworthy. 10 out of 10. So, we'll get into our SmackDown rating. I only gave SmackDown a 2 this week. <laughs> Two out of ten. Two, I'd say for the AA and Chad or AA and Brazongo and the Wyatt and Orton thing. That's it. Two out of ten. I'm giving it two point five. Wow. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, you can see how low our ratings are this week. Terrible. Incredible. So let's talk about something you know, let's talk about something else right now. Let's talk about something that was good. Yeah, something that was good and that Beat Raw and SmackDown way out of the water this week. 205 Live had three matches. Three matches beat Raw and SmackDown. Five hour, five, two hours of TV. or Sorry, 45 minutes of TV beat five hours of wrestling TV. I just want to point out that Raw and SmackDown combined for one women's match that lasted two minutes. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'd like to see? Some women cruiserweights. That'd be interesting. Amber how, how low would weight, be unbelievable. How low weight would you have to be, though? <laughs> 105? <laughs> oh, God. 105 all the women are under 205, yeah. except for Nia Jax. And yeah, maybe yeah. Dana Brooke. And Tamina. And Charlotte. <laughs> God. But. Anyways. I don't know. We'll move in. Cedric Alexander opened up facing Noam Dar. So, apparently, Alicia Fox is yeah. now officially... Cedric Alexander's on screen. So does that mean she's only going to be on 205 and whenever Cedric Alexander appears on Raw? <laughs> I guess. I guess she's her boyfriend Better now. Better than what she's doing in her woman's singles career. Yeah, I guess. Well, Cedric Alexander, unreal piece of talent. He's so good. His in-ring ability is just... But it's for some be- reason... Beyond good. He's not getting over when he comes out. Yeah, I know. Whatever. Maybe he has to change his entrance team a bit. But, you know, it, 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 again, it's a, it's a 205 crowd... It needs to be taped at Full Sail University. The crowd is just dead and mostly gone at this point of the night. So maybe that's why, they, again, that's why I think the Full Sail people can help people get over because they were over when they watched them in the Cruiserweight Classic. So I don't know. Uh, I love the fuse they're building for 205 Live, though. This, yeah. This, and this is one of them. Yep. Uh, no M. Dar. Dar ended up winning this match, surprisingly. And it made sense because after he got on the mic, cut a heelish promo, and basically dedicated his match to Cedric Alexander's girlfriend, Alicia Fox. I like this a lot. So, I, you know what? I can, again, right here. This, this right here. I'm still on the page. This beat Raw's entire show right there. Because they actually, right there. They actually built. They actually showed us the progression of a few. We had a pre-segment with Alicia Fox kissing Cedric Alexander, good luck, and establishing that they're a couple. We had the mid, which is the match, Where which was Dar an unreal had match. Tactics. He wouldn't shake his yeah. hand beforehand. The, 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 the skill alone in the ring yeah. made a, a 10 out of 10 match. And we had the ending with Dar cutting a heel promo and dedicating his match to Alicia Fox. This was just perfect. This was a perfect 10 segment that beat Raw way out of the water. Unbelievable. They, they know how to progress a feud. 
crazy. So we move on. Araya Davari versus Jack Gallagher. Again, Jack Gallagher, we know, we've talked about him before, brings that unique style to uh, the 205 division. Gentlemanly style. Yeah, and I love it. Looks like they're continuing this feud as well. Uh, Davari cutting a promo, basically like, uh, or not a promo, yet a, a video package, and basically playing the stereotype, how people look at him as like, you know, oh, they see him as a... Oh, no, wait, that was Mustafa Ali, my bad. Yeah. Because they look at his first name and they think automatically think he's, you know terrorist whatever and that's wrong obviously we know but the, 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 it looks like you're continuing this feud i mean gallagher and davari because they've had this is the third yep. match they've had in a week and gallagher <laughs> was playing off the knee injury again yeah um davari won this match with the eye rake and a frog splash interesting frog splash is his finisher which we thought was like oh eh, it's all right it's almost d'lo brown-esque nothing's as good as the lowdown but, yeah <laughs> um yeah i like it yeah. I like it. I like. I like to see where this feud Three, is going to head. Yep. The, each week they've, or each match they've done something different, which mm-hmm. is nice to progress the feud. Yep. And we know we get the same. I know we're going to have the same in a feud like this. In the match, you're going to get the same spots as in Gallagher's. Uh, I love when he goes up to the top turnbuckle and he's upside down. And he uses his feet to stop. You know, it, yeah. it's part of his style. And people are like, "Oh, it's so corny." I'm like, "That's his character." That's his style on the ring. He's that type of like person. I said, that's what's going to make him stand out. You're going to go yeah. home and say, like, you know, who is that guy that I was acting like that? You yeah, remember Jack him. Gallagher. Exactly. That's why I love about it. I love his unique style. He brings the division. Can't wait to see where this feud goes on from here. Uh, so again, we had some other promo packages with Mustafa Ali, and we had uh, Grand Man- or uh, sorry Lance Dorado get a promo package too. He looks like he's going to be debuting in the 205 division next week as well. You know, he was there before, but. We're, it looks like we're probably in a feud or something started with him next week on 205 Live. We'll get into the main event now. Swan versus Kendrick 2 for the Cruiserweight title. Unreal match. Beforehand, there was the promo backstage. Oh, yeah, there was a promo backstage with uh, Perkins. TJ Perkins. And Swan. Yeah. And they're kind of saying like how they're friends, but then mm-hmm. TJ Perkins is kind of being cocky, kind of a yeah. heel tea saying, like, we all know that I'm better, though. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, he said, uh, he's like, I know you're good enough to beat Kendrick, but you're not good enough to beat me. So, yeah. per- Perkins, a better, yeah, better promo here. I love it. Up. Yeah, Ooh. I love it. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Kendrick's at uh, commentary. Yeah. For this uh, you mean TJ I Perkins mean, at commentary? Perkins, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Looking like a freaking bartender for a freaking Sweet 16, by the way. <laughs> God, what the hell was he wearing? <laughs> oh, God. Like anyway. The Jericho hairstyle going. Yeah. It was a really good match, though. Kendrick and, and, and Swan look like they, they're going to be yeah. those two guys. They're going to be like the Zayn and the Owens. Like, every time they face each other, it's going to be a crazy match. Um, a lot of back and forth action. Oh, what about the uh, outside the ring, the sliced bread? Off oh, yeah, the, the sliced bread off the barricade. The crazy ass spots these guys can put up. Swan, such a crazy piece of talent where we, we me and Cal- Corporate Happy, fall in love with this guy. Um, his his entrance, his mannerisms, yeah. the way the way his character acts in the ring, it's just yeah, I love it, love it. Swan ends up retaining and winning this match, really really close match. Um, another spot in the match was Swan threw Kendrick in the Perkins, yeah. who was sitting at ringside. <laughs> and it was funny because they showed the replay and like Ken, uh, Perkins took his his headset off right before it happened like he knew it was coming yeah like he he definitely sold it a little yeah. worse there a little but, bad and then after the match perkins was pissed off at kendrick and then they start yeah. brawling yeah and then swan comes back for the save yeah oh my god <laughs> and then perkins meant to super kick kendrick but ends up hitting Swan in like the most Brutal super kick and I've ever seen. Great camera work by the cameraman. If anyone can give me a gif of that, I'd be awesome. I'm going to look for one, but I need that gif of that because the camera angle was like on You point. couldn't even see Perkins until the, the, the kick, the came, kick in the came in. And it was perfect. I have to go back and watch that. That was crazy. Was, that was great. But looks like they're setting up a few. This looks like it's going to lead to a triple threat match for the Cruiserweight title. And I, like, I would this love is that. Awesome. Like the way they're building this feud. Unreal. You can't ask yeah. for anything more. No. Like Ron needs to take notes from Notes this. from... 205 and sometimes SmackDown. Not SmackDown this week, but usually what SmackDown produces. Look what they're doing. And then they're they're using Brian Kendrick as playing the antagonist to try and get the friends of Rich Swan and Perkins yeah. against each other. And this is like such good storyline building. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I, I can't I just, wait for the future with I these guys. I just wish the crowd would be more behind this stuff. I know. And it sucks. Again, like I said, I hope it goes to 205 and there's rumors that it's going to be going to 205. So, or, uh, sorry, Full sale. So... I think the full cell people can appreciate it more, way more. But 205 Live, mm-hmm. 
We're going to give it, because it's out of five, right? Not ten. It's <laughs> out of five, because it's a, it's a small yeah, show. It's, it's half a show. So. I get a five out of five this week. That's gonna, I'm getting a perfect rating. I, uh, there's nothing wrong with the show today. There was literally nothing. They were, the show lasted even an hour. It didn't go to 45. It was an hour. Each match meant something. We had promo videos for what's to come in the, in the Cruiserweight division. I love it. I give five out of five. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of five. Ooh. Corporate rating from the corporate cappy. Hey, that's still a great rating. <laughs> yeah, it is. What, what was the point five though? Um, I wanted more from the, uh, what match was it? What Ga- was- Gallagher Davari? Yeah. I want okay. a little more. All right. Fair enough. Um, but other than that, I mean, the title match was fantastic. The opening match was good. They progressed storylines properly in the way they should be built to actually get you invested into right. the match. That's the big thing is they don't... Raw and SmackDown, well, mostly Raw, they don't bring you into these feuds to get you invested in it. Yeah. They it don't... SmackDown sometimes. Not sometimes. not this week, but no. SmackDown, SmackDown most of the time, they, they, Raw, they've been good. not at all. They just keep shoving this crap down the people's throats yeah. that we don't want to like see. Like Roman Reigns. They're actually starting to incorporate something else into the end of the title picture here, like mm-hmm. in, in bringing in a third person. So we'll see what go, what happens with that. But two or five live, I yeah. I mean, I love it. It's probably my favorite hour that I watch all week. Yeah, basically, that's sad. That's really sad for Raw, a three hour show in the flag, the, the supposed flagship show, is 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 the worst show of the week, and two o five is the best show of the week, especially this week. It's it, it's ridiculous. And we we don't need to talk about NXT because NXT is always good. NXT doesn't need to produce anything; and they're still good. Yeah, I, just thought, I want to know what they're going to do with Bobby Roode now. Yeah. Um, so, let's get into the last part of the show. And that is our WWE headlines. That's right. Welcome to WWE headlines, a part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. So, we have... Actually, we have four topics. I just thought of another topic, which we'll talk about at the end of it, but... Four topics this week. Number one, Mickey James signs a multi-year deal with WWE. After her match with Asuka at NXT TakeOver, they offered a deal to Mickey and left it on the table for her to sign. She's officially signed it today, it a, today and it's a multi-year full-time contract starting in January of 2017, and she will be with the SmackDown roster. I can't believe that. That's awesome. I guess the NXT match was kind of like a showcase for what she can still do in mm-hmm. the ring, and, and I she, guess they like it. She still got it. And 100%. It's so funny that we, we you literally have two autographs that you got at House of Hardcore this year that we went to, Rhino and Mickey James. In the 100 seat, barely 100 seat convention center. Convention center. Now both of them are on SmackDown Live. Those are worth a lot of money now. <laughs> but they say to me, so I can't sell those. <laughs> um, but yeah, good for Mickey James. Um, I, I should do great. I can see her being the person that attacked Nikki Bella if they do something like that, or if not, she'd be that veteran person for the SmackDown division. So yeah, I think she brings a lot to the table. Yeah, she's that that credible former champion that yeah. people know, mm-hmm. and she can help that division one hundred percent. I love yeah. that. Next bit of news, Jerry Lawler and Lita have been moved off the pre-show panel and off their full-time deals with WWE. They've been both giving Legends contract, <laughs> but according to Jim Ross, Lita is actually finished with the WWE. I guess they're scrapping the whole pre-show thing. Sort of. They've brought in Booker T. For Raw and SmackDown, they brought in Booker T and uh, Charlie Caruso. But for the... Uh, as, as of now, the SmackDown pay-per-view, like the, the SmackDown branded pay-per-view is a pre-show they're bringing in special guests like there's a dj for tlc some like local dj but they're just they bring in they're bringing special guests for the half hour pre-show and we don't know where scott stanford is i don't know if he got future i don't Denver know or, what. And, or he's on the network now whatever we'll see but yeah interesting um, uh lita finished with there to be completely I, that's i the, thought she was doing an all right job i never heard anything about hate or anything so i don't well, know maybe it's, it was a mutual thing yeah who maybe knows she's taking time off maybe she, you know she's taking a vacation jerry man. lawler he just needed to be done man his time oh passed. man yeah he's with the the corny jokes i couldn't take i always tweeted about it in a pre-show i'm like god this is corny jokes ever terrible i just you know it needs to go he he's done he's done all he look at his career he's had it with rb he's done he doesn't need to be around anymore no no <laughs> you got girls like charlie caruso and and Kathleen Kelly mm-hmm. and Renee Kathy Young trying Kelly. to be trying to get big. So you know, give me more Kathy Kelly. Mm-hmm. Love Kathy <laughs> Kelly. Um, going to the third bit of news. WWE is in official signing mode. 
in terms of independent scene, um, they've officially signed Drew Gulak to a multi-year full-time contract for 205 Live, Ooh. so that's good to hear. But I guess WWE has been paying more attention to the indie scene, uh, apparently to go as far as watching pay-per-views for the indie scene and keeping track of talents that they want to sign. And apparently even Vince McMahon himself has given the okay for uh, people in the company to do that. Wow, Vince even said that. Even Vince, yeah. Maybe Triple H finally showed him how, how much talent there is out there mm-hmm. instead of building. Like, I know he wants to build his own at the Performance Center, but you can't deny the amount of talented wrestlers there are out there that never get the opportunity to showcase what they can do. Yeah. So we'll see what happens after that. I mean, and they have, they also said uh, starting in January, they have a crop of people from the Performance Center that's been working down there ready to come up. So. WWE is going to be changing in the next year, guys. It's going to be a big, drastic change, and uh, I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. Last bit of news. Recently, as of yesterday, there has been a Twitter exchange with our boy from Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, Ty Dillinger, Perfect 10, and The Miz. These guys have been going at it on Twitter the last couple of times, just, just savage tweets, and basically Miz uh, talking about how shitty NXT is and how much <laughs> Ty's been in the independent scene so long, and uh, basically Ty is like... This basically looks like it's heading towards an IC title feud, and I really hope Ty gets called up here. Guy is the most well deserved call up right now in We're NXT. Over the the ten chants are continuing every in week. Houston. If you guys didn't listen to SmackDown Raw this week, every time there was a count out and the referee is counting, the crowd would say ten. Like, we started that in NXT Toronto, and it's continuing now. I love it, and the guy. I don't know if there sees how much dollar signs are behind Ty Dillinger and how over these 10 chants are going to be he's when he's called up. Sell so much merch. Especially if he comes out number 10 in the, in the Royal Rumble. Rumble. Like, the crowd, the 10 chants will become the yes chants. I guarantee you. It'll be the 10 movement. And I love that. It looks like he's going to be on SmackDown. Perfect place for Ty Dillinger. I, I was so going to be angry if he's going to be on Raw because he would just get fucking buried. You're going to get squashed by Braun yeah. Strowman. So I love that he's going to be on SmackDown. Good for our boy Ty Dillinger, and we'll see what happens with him after that. Yeah, so. I'm hoping maybe we see him at another another piece of news, Hamilton Live event. Yeah, which we in, most uh, likely will be going to in two Mondays from now, or is it next Monday? No, uh, two Mondays from now. Two Mondays. And so we're probably going to miss Raw that week. Yeah, so whatever. But we're going to go smack on Live. Shit, anyway. It's probably going to be the, the holiday Raw. We'll have Mark Henry dressed as yeah. Santa. <laughs> oh, so God. And Tyus O'Neill, the, t- the Tussle and Tinseltown. Get- we're not going to get great seats, but it's a yeah. live event, so whatever. Yeah. It's going to be a SmackDown live event, yeah. so you know I'll be pumped to see my girl Alexa Bliss with the title, AJ, AJ Styles, Styles. Yeah. Um, Randy Wyatt, I guess. It's Randy, Randy Wyatt. <laughs> God. Oh, all right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up yep. today for the Lowdown Show, guys. Week number thirty-five on No Holds Barred Wrestling podcast we are canadian based already podcast that reviews and discusses monday night raw tuesday night smackdown and 205 live from the past week also during the show we have our twitter poll segment called the luke gallus Col- polls hosted by our very own uh corporate cabbie i see it's cold it's like the holidays you know it's like Coles. michael cole yeah <laughs> And WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you would like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at Noah's Bar WP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed grace host, Kyle Masters. And every week I'm continued to be joined by my corporate co-host, the boss, Bispel Boss. Sorry corporate cappy stay tuned for those slammy awards guys we're putting a lot of work into them yeah it's gonna be great and as always we're here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street <laughs> Is that what you got? Is it the